Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera. Uh, since the weather is still nice out here and we still have some sunshine, though it's still quite hot and humid, thought I'd uh, take advantage of the, uh, the sunlight and nice weather to make another video. Uh, the, the weather forecast for the rest of the week is doom and gloom with uh, rain every day. Not that I trust the forecasts here, they tend to be uh, pretty much opposite of what you expect, but uh, considered the amount of rain we've had over the last uh, five or six weeks, uh, 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 the odds of it continuing are probably still pretty good. Uh, the subject of my second video today is not a vintage Japanese camera, but a vintage German camera. And this is the Voigtlander Vito C, which was introduced in about 1960. Uh, the reason that I am doing a video on this camera is because I think this camera is very well suited toward uh, street photography. Uh, a lot of people who like rangefinders and vintage cameras uh, are interested in street photography uh, as an art. And uh, while most rangefinder cameras, TLRs and things like that are very well adapted to this kind of photography, uh, some cameras are better than others. And a camera like the Vito C is uh, quite a wonderful tool for, for this form of art. Uh, the reason I say that it is a, a good car, a camera for street photography is due to its incredible simplicity. You can see on this camera that there's pretty much nothing on it. Uh, we have a focusing ring on the front, we have a shutter speed dial, we have an aperture dial, we have a winder here, and we have a shutter release button, and that's it. There are no batteries, no electronics, no pretty much anything on this camera. Uh, it's, it's quite simple, quite reliable, and actually is a quite a, really, quite a good performer. Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, point out the controls, features, and functions in a little more detail and give you an idea how to use this camera to its best potential. Uh, starting at the top of the camera, it's very flat across the top. Uh, over here we have a, a kind of a dial here with an arrow around it. This, uh, di this kind of doubles as an indicator showing for, uh, you know, a turn indicator which you use to uh, show what kind of uh, film you have loaded in the camera and exposures. There's kind of a, a tab here which you push to turn it one way or the other. And uh, this doubles as the film rewind knob and to rewind the film you have to push this lever here under my thumb next to the viewfinder to the side and this pops up and allows you to rewind the film. Uh, quite an interesting feature and very clean. Over here we have a shoe for mounting a flash gun and we have a PC sync socket located uh, on the front of the camera here, so you can use a either a vintage flash gun with bulbs uh, if you really like to, to carry the vintage thing to extremes, or you can simply use a modern strobe flash. On the back of the camera we have the viewfinder, and one of the things which makes this camera especially well suited to street photography is a very, very large viewfinder window and a bright line frame lines. So this allows you to lift the camera to your eye and very quickly see it a very large and bright image through the viewfinder. Uh, next to that we have the uh, film winding and shutter charging lever which fits very flush and uh, it really adds to the style of the camera. Uh, next to that we have on this side the release for the film door and this camera features a top and bottom release. You have to push both together in order to open the film door which makes it more, more difficult or very difficult to accidentally open the door and expose your film. Uh, being this is a leaf shutter camera, of course, all the important functions are going to be on the front. We have an indicator arrow here on the bottom, and you use this to line up your aperture. We have a Lanthar lens, a Voigtlander Lanthar lens, which is actually quite a, a, a well-made and a great performing lens, with a maximum aperture of f2.8. Uh, Nowadays there's, and for many, for a long time, there's been kind of a, a desire to have the faster and more precisely made lenses, say like f1.4 f1 or even faster lenses. But in the real world, we very rarely shoot at these really wide apertures. Uh, I, I guess the desire for these lenses is kind of like the desire for a, a large V8 or V12 engine in your car. It's nice to have on, on yeah, uh, on maybe that few minutes per year which you actually step on the gas pedal all the way. Uh, I've had a number of these uh, lenses and only a few times in over the last years have I actually gone out and shot photographs, you know, 
it, it, the, the wide aperture in, in the fast lens. Uh, in most cases, we're going to be shooting at anywhere between f5.6 and f.11 because these are the apertures which give you the best performance from pretty much any lens. In front of this, we have the uh, shutter dial, and we have kind of a, a limited range of shutter speeds on this camera, which might seem as a bad thing to some people, but which in reality is a good thing. Uh, we have a speed uh, range of bulb at 1 30th of a second through 1 250th of a second. Uh, a good thing about not having the shutter speeds lower than 1 30th of a second as, is that unless you're using a tripod, it's pretty much impossible to get a, an image without blur shooting at those uh, lower shutter speeds. Uh, if, you, if you hold yourself up against something or rest the camera on something flat, of course you can get a, a blur-free image or a more blur-free image, but uh, it's difficult. Uh, even shooting at 1 30th of a second, you have to be quite steady in order not for the camera to shake. The good thing about cameras like this uh, uh, Vito C is it's a, it has a lens shutter which doesn't have uh, much inertia or movement to it. So the only thing you really have to worry about is steady hands and uh, the movement generated when you push the, the shutter speed dial. Uh, in my case, I think most of my uh, shooting is done between 60th and 1 250th of a second. I usually shoot uh, 400 speed Tri-X film and I, I kind of avoid uh, taking photographs on sunny days like today uh, because there's too much contrast in the scenery. The good thing about shooting on overcast days or in metro areas where there's a lot of shade from the buildings is that you can get uh, uh, more things within your photo with a lot less contrast. So uh, uh, this camera has a really great range of shutter speeds for, uh, for my kind of shooting. And then the front here we have the focusing ri uh, ring and this is a scale focus camera and we kind of have a series of marks on here. For example, we have a a mark here with a red dot, which would be about 1.3 meters, which would be for shooting portraits, say shooting at someone from say the middle of the chest up through the top of their head. Uh, then we have a, another arrow here, which is kind of uh, for capturing someone who is, uh, uh, you want to capture their entire body when they're standing and fit them within the frame lines. Further on, we have a red dot, and this is kind of for our group photos, where everyone is sitting in a group, not quite an infinity, but where everyone fits within the frame lines. And of course, we have the infinity setting. What makes this a wonderful camera for uh, street photography is that for the conditions you are shooting in, you can preset everything. So say if I, if I want to shoot at, uh, say, uh, uh, people, setting my focus range here on the red triangle, and I'm shooting on an overcast day, uh, in the Tokyo area using, say, Tri-X film. I would set my shutter speed to around f160 and my aperture around f8. And the camera is set. And pretty much all I have to do is uh, wind the film and charge the shutter. And when I come within this range here that's on my preset focus, all I have to do is quickly compose and shoot like so. Uh, there, there is nothing to do. I don't have to focus. I don't have to play with any of the sud shed settings. All I have to do is just press the shutter button. Uh, that makes this camera uh, much faster to operate than uh, most digital cameras, which when you are using them in a the typical mode, you push the shutter button. Uh, the camera quickly selects the, the focus, uh, the, the shutter and aperture speed, and then takes the photo. And as fast as uh, modern uh, uh, cameras are like the this uh, G7X I'm using right now. Uh, this Vito C is going to be faster to operate. Uh, a modern DSLR camera will, of course, uh, focus extremely quickly and make the necessary adjustments. However, a DSLR camera is large and bulky, and because of that, is not the best tool for something like candid street photography. So uh, this is a, a really wonderful camera for that kind of uh, for that kind of shooting. On the back of the camera here, I pointed out the, the film winding lever and the release lever. On the bottom here, we have a standard quarter inch tripod socket, and we have the film counter, which is located on the bottom of the camera, which is kind of an odd place to put it. Uh, usually, I don't really look at the counter until I'm kind of worried that I'm getting toward the end of the roll of my film, and often I don't realize I'm at the last uh, frame anyway until I can't wind the, fi the film anymore. Loading the film is quite easy. Uh, you push down on the two levers here, Pull the film door open like so, uh, pop up uh, the film rewind knob and push up the forks here. Set your film cartridge inside, then I push this down to hold the film cartridge in place. 
I'll pull the film across and feed the end of the film leader into the take up spool like so and then wind it until the holes on either side of the film are engaged in the teeth in the take up sprocket. Then close the door, film door and uh, wind the film and press the shutter butt until the counter moves up. Uh, one thing that is kind of difficult about this camera is that you have to manually uh, reset the counter yourself rather than uh, it doesn't do it automatically. And a really cool thing about this camera and one thing I didn't realize is that it does have a, a fitting for a cable release. So you can attach a cable release to the bottom of the camera and actually this is kind of an interesting way to do it if you have the camera mounted on a tripod. So you can take long exposures with slow speed films in limited light uh, so it is possible with this camera though uh, for myself I think this camera is best suited for street photography. Anyway, uh, that's it for my video about the Voigtlander Vito C. Uh, I'll have this camera listed for sale shortly in my online store japanvintagecamera.com as well as my Etsy store which is also Japan Vintage Camera. Uh, please check the links in the description below the video if you want to visit my shops and buy this or another vintage uh, camera. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I hope you tune in again soon.